Soundboard Basics Equalization Most of the knobs on the board are fairly easy to understand. You simply turn them up and the volume goes up. You turn them down and the volume goes down. One of the hardest things to manage are the EQ settings, which stand for equalization. This allows you to isolate a part of the channel, one segment of the spectrum, and turn the volume up only on that part of the spectrum. If you're not familiar with this, that's probably confusing. I'm going to try to explain it in greater detail. Here we have a spectrum, a way of representing sound that makes sense visually. So with our spectrum, we have zero in the middle, which represents no addition to or decrease from the level of sound. We go down to minus 12 to say that the channel is off, and we go up to plus 12, which is as loud as we can make the channel using the EQ. So if we want to represent an increase in the sound, we go up. If we want to represent a decrease in the sound, we go down. But in addition to the vertical, we can also map out the horizontal. And so here we have the left half of the spectrum and the right half of the spectrum, or the bass and the treble. Now you probably have two dials on your home stereo that say bass and treble. And so if you want to turn up the bass sound, what you're doing is you're turning up all the low frequencies. If you turn up the treble, you're increasing or decreasing the high sounds that you hear. So if you're playing dance music and you want it to be uh, very energetic, you might turn up the bass. And then the kick drum and the bass guitar are going to be very prominent. If you're listening to somebody speak and you can't quite hear them clearly because it's a little bit muddy, then you might turn up the treble, which is going to make it sharper and crisper and more distinct. So our spectrum, left and right, is how high or low the sound is, and up or down is how loud the sound is. We're not limited to dividing the spectrum only into two slices. We can divide it into three slices. So here we have the low, the mid, and the high. And these are the divisions that are made on our soundboards. We can control the lower third of the spectrum, the middle third of the spectrum, and the upper third of the spectrum. And those are the dials you see over on the right, H, M, M, L, and then a button. So there's four dials. One controls the high end of the spectrum. One controls the low end of the spectrum. Two control the middle end of the spectrum. And then the button is a special button for controlling the low in a different way. We'll get into all of that. But three divisions is not where we need to stop. You can have any number of divisions in the spectrum that you want. Uh, usually you'll have a, a five band EQ or a 15 band EQ or a 31 band EQ or maybe even a 60 band EQ. However, finally you want to divide the spectrum, you can. And when you're using computers, it's very easy to build programs that will make very sharp slices in the spectrum and allow you greater and greater control. In the middle of a live presentation, there's only so much that you can do to tweak EQ. And so the controls that we have are simple and powerful. They let you shape the sound in a couple of basic ways. The first thing we're gonna look at is that gray button down at the bottom. This is the low cut button. And when you press it, the low frequencies sharply drop off to zero in a waterfall shape. Do you see the orange line and how it just sort of goes off a cliff and drops right down to zero? This is a way of cutting out low sounds that are unpleasant from the channel. The first dial, the L dial, is our low shelf dial. And we call it a shelf dial because we have the main body uh, of the area, all of this is unaffected by any changes to this setting. And over here we have the affected area, the place where if we make changes to that dial, it's going to show up in the sound. So what we have right here is this curve down and then a flat area that we call the shelf, and that shelf can raise or lower. So if we put that dial right straight up and down, 
then we're going to have a pattern like this where there's no real effect to the sound it's still flat in the EQ but if we want we can turn that dial over to the left and then we're going to get a pattern that goes down to a low shelf or we can have it turn to the right and then we're going to have a pattern that comes up to a high shelf so anywhere in between here you can have that shelf raise or lower in the same way that we can raise our low shelf up and down we can raise our high shelf up and down it's the H dial right at the top and so what you see here is the pattern for if we had turned the dial up a little bit to the right in the same way as the low shelf if we have if we have that straight up and down then we're just going to have a straight pattern with no effect to the sound but if we want to we can turn that down and have the shelf drop down so here our unaffected area is over here and our affected area is the top third of the spectrum so all we're doing is the same thing on the other end of the spectrum the low shelf and the high shelf now we get to our middle two dials we have two dials both of which affect the mids but they do it in two different ways we're going to start with the first dial on the top so this is the second down from the top dial and just like the high and low shelf EQs it controls the increase or decrease in the bell curve that is created by this dial so you see here our nice bell curve and that means that this channel has been raised a little bit we can do the same thing but turn it down and then we're going to get a shape that's more like this and so if we leave it right in the middle then we're just going to get a flat EQ like that with no changes higher or lower and that is our bell shape that comes from the mid EQ dial so here we have our bell curve and we've created that by turning the upper mid dial up slightly to the right well what does this second dial do what's that for well what this dial does is to shift that bell curve left or right so if we turn it down then what we're going to do is shift that bell curve to the left and so instead of the bell curve that we see there in orange we're going to see something more like this bell curve in red we've shifted it to the left closer to the base end of the spectrum in the same way we can shift it to the right by turning that dial up and then what happens is our bell curve moves to the right so what we can do is we can sweep the bump in the spectrum that bell curve back and forth and we can do that going up or going down so if we turn the dial the upper dial down we're going to get a negative bell curve if we turn it to the right up we're going to get a positive bell curve and then we can move that bell curve back and forth depending on where we want it to be in the spectrum and so what we can do is fine tune the mids to be the perfect spot on the on the spectrum for that particular sound source thank you for watching this video equalization is a complex subject it requires some artistic understanding of what the sound ought to sound like and some technical expertise to know how to match on the board what you're hearing in your head it's confusing it's complex and it takes quite some time to master I hope that this video has given you the basics to understand what the dials do but for every individual instrument or voice you're going to need to learn what the impact of the EQ settings are for that particular voice or instrument there's no shortcuts you need to just experiment and find out what happens turn the bass up a whole lot and see what change that makes to a particular sound turn it down and see what's missing does that improve the sound or does it make it worse now when you're making changes in a live setting subtle changes are the most important thing to do 
So you can turn it way up high in order to figure out what sort of change it is that you're making. But after you've gotten a sense for that, make a subtle change, keeping it fairly close to the middle. I hope that helps. Happy uh, exploration.